Hello, and welcome to another episode of ES Repair. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. In a previous video, I've showed you how you can identify resistors when you, if you ever come across having to replace one. This episode, I'm going to show you how to identify capacitors and what they actually do. They all come in different shapes and sizes. They come down very small. We've got a whole collection here. You get pretty small capacitors here that only holds a little bit. Oh, we have these great big gigantic ones. And this in here pretty much hold a, char a hell of a charge. Capacitors are more like filters. They filter incoming signals and pretty smooth them out. You see a lot of these in power supplies. They smooth out the ripple voltage coming out of the power supply and gives it a little smooth. Convert it to DC. They kind of like batteries, but they don't hold a charge as much as a battery, which I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to turn his power supply on if I don't burn it up first. This capacitor here on the side of them, they give you labels. All capacitors have some sort of label on them. And what they do is they'll tell you the voltage that they can run on. Maximum. This is the maximum voltage. Anything above that can damage the capacitor. As long as it don't go above the voltage, working voltage, it's okay. The next number here, which is says 19,000, MFD, which is labeled on some capacitors, stand for microfarads. The higher the number is, the more of a charge this capacitor can hold. Some use a symbol of the micro sign. This one here, for instance, it can handle up to 50 volts DC because this one here is polarized because it can be identified by the negative symbol. Not all capacitors are polarized. This one here has 1000 microfarads as you can be indicated by this symbol. Capacitors will hold a charge and I'll demonstrate I get it on there. There we go. Their polarity. You got the polarity on here, where you see a plus sign. They're either marked by a plus sign, or in this case, they're marked by a negative sign. And most of these, like this one here, one lead, which is the positive, will be longer than the other. That's how you can identify the polarity of these. Now, when you hook them up, you can see how this holds a charge. Oh, well, hell, that's the wrong wire. No wonder. Oops. Now I got the right one. Now I got this one here plugged, hooked up to the positive. This is my ground. And you can see a little spark which meant a surge of rush and current. Now it don't do it no more. The reason for that is because this capacitor is now charged. It won't hold a charge forever. They do leak over time. To show that it's charged You see that little spark. So now you've seen the sparks that this one created. It's only got 19,000 microfarads. Well, let's try this big fat one and see what it does. This one can hold up to 30 volts, but this one has 25,000 microfarads identified by the UF on this one. So, let's give this one here a charge. Now, again, I'm going to make sure you hook your positive to the plus. Now, we're going to hook the 
positive to the plus. Put my ground up. It may spark because there's going to be a sudden rushing current. Just like that. Now when it quits sparking, it means now the capacitor is fully charged. Now, you remember the other capacitor, it was a pretty weak spark. Now, now that we got these all unhooked, it's fully charged. To demonstrate how this holds a more charge than this, watch how big the spark becomes. That's a demonstration to show you that this one here can hold more of a charge. And they can be dangerous. When you're dealing with capacitors, you need to make sure that they're fully discharged before you even touch the contacts on them because the voltage it contains in them can be lethal. Now, we can test to see if a capacitor is working. If a, dead, if a capacitor is not working, that means it's not going to hold a charge. So, what we're going to do here is I'm going to demonstrate on how to test for a capacitor. Now, this one here is real tiny. You may not be able to see it. But it's a 100 microfarad capacitor that can handle up to 16 volts. Hold it. Plus, you will also need to mark your polarity on the capacitor. And keep the polarity correct to the meter. Alright. Now, not all capacitors do have polarities, which it wouldn't matter how you hook those up. But this one here does. So, we need to make sure our polarity is going to be correct on the meter. Now, to test these, you will need a meter that can, ha that can test for capacitance. The capacitance symbol is on a meter that looks like this. You need to set the meter to this symbol to test capacitance. Now meters have a limitations as to how much capacitance they can test for. So you will need to read the owner's manual to find out the limitations for your meter. Now we're going to hook the probes up. Now we'll hook the probes up. I got my test order on the capacitance. I'm going to plug my positive side. And I'm going to hook my negative side. And as you can see, the meter is running the test. And eventually it will come up. And there you go. Now this capacitor is a 100 microfarad capacitor. Currently it's showing 103.6 and and according to the symbol it's producing is a UF, which means microfarads. So we know this capacitor is working. It's working properly. Now, with, when you're replacing these uh, capacitors, uh, you can use a higher voltage capacitor and it won't bother it but you cannot use a lower voltage because the voltage that's being supplied to it would have burned it up. That's it for this episode. I'm your host, Mr. Fixit. Take care.